that very ominous and creepy Maharu behind Gurren in this episode. When you just see the hands pop out, that music playing with the art, very creepy. Very fucking creepy, and it lets us know that there is a very complicated relationship between these two. Because when I first heard about Gurren and Shinoa's older sister's relationship, I thought there might have been some form of romantic relationship between them. But after seeing this episode and how Gurren kind of just shoved her to the side, it makes me think something different. So there's something else going on, a lot more complicated that we are led to believe after watching that scene. But for now, let's move past that. So, we get to see the interactions of Gurren and Kurato, and how they intermingle with each other. For instance, how they communicate with each other and the relationship. And so, we get to see or dive into the mind, a little bit of the mind of Gurren and Kurato and how they kind of act or how they perceive the world. We get to find out a little bit of the motives of Kurato and what he is striving to do, along with what type of person Gurren really is. Is he a type of person that would turn against humanity and kill off his friends and family? That's the type of person we get to find out more about in this episode. So, let's get into Kurato first. With his dialogue and the way he was interrogating Gurren in a way, he, he says his like different dialogue like, are you trying to rebel against me? I mean, are you building up a force to come out and take over the place? Are you trying to kill me? I mean, there's just many dialogue reasons. He was just trying to give Gurren loaded questions. He's like trying to make Gurren kind of struggle or probably get you know, a little bit upset to where he might reveal some information because that seems what was going on in this episode because you had it to where Kurdito was trying to ask loaded questions to make it to where Gurren might reveal something accidentally and one thing led to another and we got a little bit more of the motive behind what Kurdito is striving to do so from what he says to Gurren he's like people that kill or sacrifice people off but have no desire they are evil that's what Kurato says to Gurren, and then Gurren's like, evil? And when I got that dialogue at first, I'm like, okay, so was he just talking about Gurren, or was it something else? And then we see at the end of the episode, we see an example of the sacrificing. You have it to where Kurato is sacrificing this girl and experimenting on this girl and trying to do all sorts of ungodly, unholy things to her. And as we see... This is probably what Kurato was talking about in the earlier stages of the episode. How, if you're going to sacrifice someone, you better have a desire or, you know, an in-game goal. Because if you don't, you're the evil one. So it goes to show you how far that Kurato will go to accomplish his goals. So, is he evil? Is he good? Is, is what he's trying to set out to do, it, does it justify the evil deeds he is currently doing right now? That is the big question we have to wonder. But also, is Gurren that type of person? Is he a type of person to experiment on his friends, family, just to set out and go after his goals? We also get to find out a little bit more about how these weapons are made. Now, I don't know, I, I, I'm going to be honest here, I don't remember if it was ever mentioned. If it was... Slap me. Fucking just slap me, okay? But in the anime, I do not remember, I really, I really do not remember in the anime that vampires make the demon weapons. Now, I know it was hinted at in this season how, like, demons and vampires are linked in mythology and stuff. I, I know. We, we already saw that type of a conversation in this season, but it didn't directly say that vampires and demons or vampires were turned into demons for the weapons. It wasn't directly said. So I'm asking the question right now, did we just find out how these weapons are made? They're made from vampires? So they're using vampires as a catalyst to make these weapons? So that means when you're using like the demon takeover thing when like demons are inside your weapon and when you're trying to fight back, does that mean like if a vampire, or, like if the demon takes over it's like a vampire? But then what side is these demons on, then, if they were once a vampire? Are they on the vampire side, or are they on, you know, their own side, demon side, seraph side? Many questions I have right now. And what do you exactly need to make these weapons? Like, from what we found out, you need some form of high-class vampire to do it, but what exactly do you need to accomplish this? Because if it requires high-class vampires, does that mean that it requires nobles? Like those type of vampires. That would mean it would need someone in high up status of, you know, vampire society that is really rare to come by and kill. 
So, if you go figure that, if all these weapons were made by vampires of that status, holy fuck. Holy fuck. And then what are these weapons that, you know, you and them are currently using? Because if they're a rarity of in of itself, what type of vampires are they? What are they? Okay, so, besides that, however, we get a little bit of comedy at the beginning of the episode with some food, and... Take it how you leave it. I laughed at that part. It was pretty fucking funny just seeing the interactions of the characters. I know some might not find that scene very enjoyable because it really comes down to your comedy taste. But I felt the beginning scene with the cooking and stuff pretty funny. Along with getting to see you interact with his new family. And it really goes to show you how far his character has come since the first season. Because, I mean, if you take some back steps and look at the first season... You know, you, he was the type of character that didn't want to have any more friends. He didn't want another family, he didn't want to have any more friends, because after what happened to his family, he didn't want to move on. And seeing how you was talking about how this is his family now, it's like him accepting that his previous family is dead, and he is moving on. So, some really good character progression in this episode to see how far you has come since the first season. So yeah, tell me your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.